Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to reply to a very simple and basic question asked by a viewer and that is how do I get the doctor of philosophy and this person is essentially in high school at this stage and he asked this question. So I'll give you a 10 step process about how you essentially end up with a doctor of philosophy starting right at the end of the high school stage. So the number one step is you need to get a bachelor's degree and essentially you can get this degree at typical colleges and universities and once you are finished with the bachelor's degree there is step number two you need to get the master's degree now some universities do permit you to go directly from bachelor's degree to phd degrees but my recommendation is that you should always try to get a master's degree in between because in case you decide that you do not want to pursue the PhD degree, at least you will have the master's degree with you. Now the number three step is find universities which give PhD degrees. And essentially, once you start doing the bachelor's and master's degree, it will become clear to you as to what are the top universities in your field which are essentially focused on research. So remember that PhD means research and therefore colleges which are good in giving UG degree or even master's degree are typically focused on coursework. So now you start to think about the universities which are top of the rank in research and find some such universities which have PhD programs. Now number four is that you need to find if there is financial aid to do the PhD because my recommendation is don't try to self-fund a PhD in any situation because that's not a good thing to do. Try to find some kind of funding for your PhD. So the funding may be in the form of scholarships or fellowships. It may be in the form of assistantships for research or for teaching or for grading. So if you look around, you are going to find several sources for funding for your PhD. Remember at this point, you have already got a bachelor and master's degree. So you deserve some stipend or pay for doing the PhD. Now. Number five is that you are going to find that there are going to be several exams which are used as metrics for the PhD program. And this is not the case with every university, but many universities do have an exam which is required. So for example, US universities and even some programs such as German universities like the DAAD program do require the GRE. Now there are some other programs such as GMAT and GATE which are used by different countries. There is also the possibility of GRE subject tests which are used to check out your capability in a certain given field. Now beside that if you are a non-native speaker of the English language and you are applying to a country which is essentially an English speaking country then you need to give TOEFL and IELTS. So these are two more exams which are essentially used to measure your language competence if you are applying to Germany for example you may need to give some test for the German language. Now the next point is that you apply for the PhD program. So this is typically done through the online system nowadays and essentially you fill up your details in this form. You give your background in terms of your CGPA as far as your bachelor's and master's degree is concerned and you may also need to provide some letters of references and a statement of purpose. Now typically the PhD selection committee is going to look at this set of applications which come to them and it's going to shortlist some cases. In some cases they are simply going to select these people, in some cases they are going to call you for interview. So that's the next step. You essentially go through the interview and this interview may be done in Zoom, Skype or team or sometime you may be called to the university to be present in that interview and typically the interview happens such that there is a selection committee of professors and these professors ask you about your research desires and they give you several problems which you may need to solve and then they try to figure out what is your research capability and what is your aptitude in terms of research. Now many of these things are not always revealed through the CGPA or the scores in the various standardized tests. Now I have seen in 
the case of many students that they may not have good GPA or they may not have good scores, but they end up being very good in research because the research is a different ball game. It's more a combination of motivation and diligence rather than the capability of solving problems from textbooks. So let's look at the next step. And that is you need to now come to the university, you need to register for courses and complete the PhD course requirement. So essentially you will sit down with your PhD advisor. This person is going to be a very important person in your life from now on and you need to draft a selection of courses which you need to take. Sometimes this is known as the research training program. So once you have finished these courses, you have got a decent grade in them, then you are ready for the next step. Now, in many cases, they will have a cutoff as to the CGPA you need to get for continuing in the PhD program. So make sure that you get that particular required CGPA. Now, the next step is going to be there is some kind of gatekeeper exam. So it could be a PhD qualifying exam. It could be a comprehensive exam. Sometimes it is a proposal defense. So it, that depends uh, on country and it keeps changing all the time. So essentially, this is quite a difficult part of the PhD process. You need to clear this exam. And once you are cleared of this exam, then you go to the next step. And the next step is you do all the research. Now that's a pretty big task but let's say you do all this research at the end of this research you essentially write the PhD thesis now once you have written the PhD thesis then you have the final and last step and that is you defend your PhD thesis so essentially what happens here is that there is a committee of professors and you need to make a presentation in front of these professors about your PhD thesis and they will grill you with various questions and at the end of that grilling process you are likely to be cleared with the PhD degree and at that point they will all come shake your hand and they will say that you are now a doctor so that will be then the end of your PhD journey so that was my quick take on how to get a PhD and I hope this video is useful to you please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more such videos see you soon